as I mentioned, I would I would uh, give a quick overview about uh, permobilität, permobility, what what we do, and it's it's excellent that you've had the theoretical the theoretical uh, uh, discussion already because uh, we we mostly deal with with the practical side, and I would just like to give give a few um, examples uh, from our work. And um, we spoke with, with Mr. Schramm that I have maybe 20, 30 minutes for the presentation. And after that, we have, uh, we have more time for, for discussion because I think that's, that's more, more interesting anyway. So yeah, my, my name is Savol Shepshi. I work with, uh, with Fere Mobilität in, in Dortmund in Germany. Uh, I've been working here since uh, 2013 now and uh, yes fair mobility fair mobility uh, uh, helps to, to enforce fair working conditions for workers from central and eastern europe on the G german labor market essentially we are um, a network of advisory centers uh, the organization has been funded uh, in 2011 so more than 10 years now uh, we have been counseling workers from Central and Eastern Europe uh, on German labor law. We started as a project, but since 2020, we have a permanent funding by the German Ministry of Labor. And uh, the implementation is basically financed mostly by the Ministry of Labor, but uh, is being uh, coordinated by the uh, executive board of the German Trade Union Confederation. So we are basically an organization affiliated with the German trade unions and uh, we counsel exclusively workers. So we do not counsel companies. Um, we, we only work with, with workers and, and uh, try to, to protect their interests. Uh, we have a total of 11 counseling offices in Germany and, uh, and we counsel in, uh, in 11 languages in total. So basically uh, Central and Eastern uh, uh, European languages of the EU countries. So, so we counsel uh, EU citizens from Central and Eastern Europe. Obviously the, the most important languages are, are Romanian, Polish, uh, Bulgarian, Hungarian. Are, are the four most important, but we also have people from, from uh, the Czech Republic, from Slovakia, from Croatia, uh, and so on, and, and, and so forth. Um, we offer a free of charge uh, consultation in, uh, in the native tongues of, uh, of the workers, but uh, besides this individual counseling, we also try to, to raise awareness uh, on different forms of exploitation in, in the German labor uh, market. Uh, we try to contribute to a better prevention by, by spreading information. And we also cooperate with uh, trade unions from Romania, from Bulgaria, from, from Poland and other countries in uh, trying to improve uh, the situation of mobile workers. Also in Germany, we, we, have, a, we have a broader network of um, other counseling organizations that we cooperate with. You can see a, a, a map of, of other uh, organizations that, that exist uh, in the field. Um, we uh, also offer training for, for advisors of mobile workers in Germany, but, but also for uh, trade union employees and then shop stewards who we try to, uh, to, to, to discuss the issues of, of Central and Eastern European workers, because uh, these workers often work with subcontractors within, within certain companies. Uh, but also for uh, uh, employees of, of unions, for churches, for welfare organizations and migration counseling offices. So we offer them a training on uh, labor law and especially on, on, on labor law issues that uh, migrant workers often, often face. Um, but we also network and raise awareness within, within uh, uh, politics, within unions and, and uh, within welfare organizations. Um, on the slide, you can see some of the some of the leaflets and brochures that we produce. So we have several 
publications that 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 we created uh, uh, on on living uh, in Germany and rights in Germany, but also leaflets, who more shorter leaflets with uh, for for specific questions of specific uh, people who work in the agricultural sector for lorry drivers or or people in the meat industry. Um, we we offer. And also, also in the internet through through multimedia. So we have we have uh, besides our own our own website also the site der-arbeiten.eu, where uh, where we have some FAQs and some some multimedia information for for workers in all the, the languages that uh, that we that we counsel in. Um, the you can see the the the, the links for the for the sites. Um, basically, what we offer is a is a is an individual counseling on labor law. So people who come to us uh, have uh, questions regarding regarding their their uh, labor law situation. Um, we can what we cannot do is is represent people in court, but but we offer them information and we help them uh, get their rights in an out of court strategy. That means. Um, we help them uh, uh, formulate letters for the employers and we help them start uh, court actions in order for them to be represented by the trade union. They need to be trade union members. Otherwise they need to, they need to uh, go to court either through a lawyer or, or uh, representing themselves. But, but we counsel also people who are not, uh, not uh, members of uh, of a trade union, and we offer them support with, with legal proceedings. Um, we try to to follow a collective approach as much as possible, and and in some cases, in some larger cases, we can see some some actions and activities um, where we try to enforce uh, unpaid wages for for larger groups of people through through collective uh, uh, approaches to collective collective uh, uh, actions. Uh, the people who come to, to our counseling offices are mostly mobile workers who have been in Germany for a short time. Uh, the vast majority of them speak basically no German at all or, or just very, very basic German. And they are often employed through precarious uh, working conditions like posting, like uh, temporary agency work, uh, or workers in the context of, of service contracts or, or bogus uh, self-employed uh, uh, workers. Uh, I also brought some, some statistic. We have, a, we have a free of charge hotline in, in all languages, which we started during the Corona crisis, actually at the beginning of the Corona crisis. Uh, and uh, do, uh, through this hotline, we, we try to, to answer some, some more basic, simple, short questions. Uh, and and uh, besides this, we have um, more in-depth counseling and uh, maybe just <clears throat> to give you an overview of the, uh, so we had, I had some statistic regarding, uh, So the branches, it's, it's maybe more interesting. So the, the, the most important branches, I mean, you can basically see that, that workers from Central and Eastern Europe come from a very broad um, field and then they work basically in all branches in Germany, but, but some of the most important are transportation, warehousing, logistics, the meat industry, uh, the construction sector, cleaning, uh, gastronomy, healthcare, uh, uh, care work and domestic work, but also agriculture, uh, but also fields like electricians, uh, the metal industry or, or automotive uh, supplier uh, uh, industry. So it's a, quite, a, quite a broad uh, uh, field. And regarding the countries of origin, as I said, Poland, Romania, Bulgaria, Hungary uh, are, are, are the most important, although, I mean, regarding these statistics, I always have to mention the fact that, that the number of people uh, we counsel depends primarily on our own capacities in the respective language. So I wouldn't, this, 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 this isn't necessarily representative for, for Eastern Europeans or Central and Eastern Europeans migrating in, in Germany, but this, this relates mostly to, uh, to our uh, um, 
capacities, uh, but still these the, the first four are are basically the the, the largest largest groups. And uh, okay, this is some statistic regarding uh, the communication type during the counseling. And, and as you can see, about 40% of, of people we counsel are women and about 60% are men. Um, and uh, besides individual counseling, we, we try to proactively go out and um, inform people through, uh, through information events, which, which take place with other organizations. So we visit uh, welfare organizations that, that offer migration counseling, but we also go directly into, into group accommodations where people live or, or even in front of the, uh, uh, the, the, the factories where people work and, and do an info stand. Uh, and uh, basically, mostly since the Corona crisis, many of these information events uh, take place on the internet, mainly through Facebook. So we we offer live uh, counseling sessions on Facebook, where we have a short presentation on basic rights, and and people afterwards have the possibility to to uh, post questions through through comments and 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 get direct answers through online counseling, which we actually only started uh, during the Corona crisis when, when uh, personal counselings were, were not so much or less, less possible, but uh, they, uh, they actually worked uh, very, very well. So we were, we, we were almost, almost a little bit surprised ourselves why we didn't start with that earlier. Um, maybe regarding the topics or the reasons that, that people uh, come for advice. So uh, the largest, largest group of topics is payment, which can, can mean uh, the less salary has not been paid uh, is, a, is a very common uh, issue. So we actually have companies that, that, that regularly do not pay less salaries because they assume that that, for, that, that if a worker comes from Romania or another country, then they will not be able to, to do anything about it. But also uh, layoffs, uh, uh, questions regarding the labor contract, questions regarding working time, also questions regarding sickness, uh, work accidents, or, or uh, unemployed benefits. And since 2020, we also had a lot of questions related to the coronavirus and, um, and labor rights, which of course is quite a broad topic because corona and labor rights can mean anything from quarantine to all the, all the consequences that the quarantine or the inability to, to cross the border can, can have on, on the working situation. Uh, we also had in, in several of the branches, uh, 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 lots of corona cases. So that's actually a quite, quite broad topic, but it plays a very large role in, in our counseling. Um, now I would close the presentation, but I think we can, uh, so um, maybe we can also discuss a little bit about, about some, of the, some of the concrete industries. I think we will, I mean, since we have, um, not so much time, we will probably not have, uh, we cannot discuss all of them. And um, basically people come from, from all, um, from a lot of branches, but I thought maybe we can discuss a little bit about the situation in the meat industry, because that's actually one area where um, a lot has changed uh, in, in the last two to three years. Also, we had some positive changes and where, where people have, have become uh, quite active, uh, especially in the last, in the last two years. Um, and maybe after, after that, if, if you have questions about other sectors, we can, we can discuss those as well. Um, so a little bit about the meat industry. I mean, as, a, as I mentioned, I've, um, I've been working here since 2013, and and I mean I can say that the conditions that I have found uh, in the German meat industry. You mentioned it that I that I worked in Hungary before that, so I also came to came to Germany because because of this job and and was 
mostly new to Germany, but um, as far as the, the general image that the Germany has in the world is, is concerned, uh, the, the conditions that I found in the, in the German meat industry, I would, have, I would have not really thought possible in, in, in Germany to, um, that such conditions uh, for, for people working and living in Germany that it could actually be, be possible. So when I started in 2013, we had people coming to, to the counseling office regularly who, who were basically working here for years without health insurance, who had never seen a pay slip, uh, who didn't have a work contract, who were basically contracted by, by letterbox companies uh, that were in a foreign country, typically in, in Poland or in Romania. Uh, who basically worked under the, the conditions of the, the labor laws of the country where they theoretically were uh, employed, although these were almost always uh, bogus postings. So these, these postings didn't really meet uh, pretty much any of the, the criteria that the correct posting should meet. Um, so people were not, I mean, in a regular posting, you should you should be having people working um, in their home country, being posted for a, a temporarily to another country. These mostly were people who were already in Germany who got offered contracts uh, by a foreign company. Often they uh, they they signed contracts with companies that didn't even come from their from their own country. So we had Bulgarians or Romanians being posted through Polish companies who, as was told in theory by the companies, have had a job in Poland, although these people never even been to Poland in, in their entire lives. So these were very, very obviously uh, fake postings, but uh, nobody seemed to really, really care uh, about that. And the labor, low situation of, of these people was, was terrible because they basically could not, could not enforce any kind of rights uh, uh, in Germany because, because a court was not, even, was not even responsible for them. And important to know that in, during this time, we also did not have a minimum wage in Germany. So the minimum wage in Germany exists only since uh, 2015. And before that, there was not really any low, uh, 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 lowest bar that, that you had to meet uh, for a legal wage. So you could, you could easily pay four to, to five euros an hour, and it was not, not per se uh, 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 illegal. And um, well, as I mentioned, conditions were terrible as, as well, the working conditions as well as the, the housing conditions. So very long working hours, very low salaries, uh, a, a complete higher end fire policy. So we regularly had people who suffered accidents and were put on the first bus basically to, to Romania, but also no paid, no paid holidays and, and no paid sickness leave, um, which gradually led to, to, to the industry becoming a, a terrible reputation uh, 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 in Germany. So we had even a few, um, so there was from time to time some media attention and, and at some point uh, uh, politicians started getting some attention to, uh, uh, um, to, the, to, the, to the topic of uh, working conditions in the meat industry. And uh, successively, there was some, some regulation happening for the, for the industry. So in 2014, uh, the, the industry got a, a minimum wage, which was uh, at that time 7 euros and 74 cents for an hour. And the fact that the general minimum wage in Germany came in 2015, which was then uh, 8 euros 50, uh, and it also applied to, to, to posted workers, made the whole posting uh, uh, much less attractive. And starting in 2015 and in 2017, there, there came some more legislation for stricter controls. So basically, 2016, 2017, uh, most 
large slaughterhouses uh, basically switched to to um, to subcontractors registered in Germany instead of subcontractors who were who were posting people. So by by about 2017, uh, um, workers who, who were working in the German meat industry were registered for, for social insurance in Germany and also had health insurances, which, which was quite, quite a big step. And they also, through, through being in the, in the social systems, they also uh, got gained the right for unemployed benefits, for example, uh, after one year which had also not been the case before. And, and it made, made it easier for people to, to claim their rights because at least they knew if I get fired, which basically always happened if you claimed your rights, uh, at least I can, get, I can get unemployed benefits, which was also had not been the case before. However, um, slaughterhouses still kept working through subcontractors to, to, to hilariously large extent. So basically we had 80 to 90% of people working in, 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 a, in um, a slaughterhouse in a factory uh, being hired not by the slaughterhouse, but by, by, uh, uh, by subcontractors. Um, for example, we have, uh, as I mentioned, we, we work in Dortmund and, and the, Europe's largest slaughterhouse for pigs, the Tönje slaughterhouse, which they slaughter about 20,000 pigs a day, uh, is, is, is just about 100 kilometers from Dortmund. And at, during this time, they had um, about 4,000 people working in the main factory in the production, of which about 500 were employed directly. And uh, all the others came from, from subcontractors at that time. And obviously, um, the entire factory being divided between many small subcontractors led to a lot of competition uh, between, in between these subcontractors. And obviously, um, basically, they, they only had one leverage to, to, to be more competitive, and that was, that was low wages, because the, the slaughterhouse uh, Put, uh, offered everything, so the, the infrastructure and, and everything was basically uh, uh, set. And the only, the only leverage they, they had was uh, doing the amount of work with, with lower wage costs. And uh, they tried to pay people as little as possible and press them, press them um, out as much as possible. And the higher and fire policy persisted uh, completely, which also led to an enormous fluctuation uh, in the industry. So we have large slaughterhouses, which have a fluctuation about, of about 100% uh, of, of personnel. Um, I mean, as, as, as you probably also heard and discussed uh, in, in uh, 2020, we had some massive uh, corona outbreaks in, in German slaughterhouses, which had become a massive media scandal. So out of the blue, basically uh, the, the working conditions of, of German slaughterhouses were in the spotlight of, of really old mainstream media. So basically the evening news was, was, was covering uh, it and everybody was very surprised how, how come working conditions are, are so terrible in, in, in slaughterhouses as they have been for, for 20 years. And, um, Actually, very surprisingly, also for us, very surprisingly, the government decided to completely forbid subcontracting in the meat industry and, and force the uh, slaughterhouses to, to um, hire people directly, which was something that we've been asking for for 10 to 20 years, but we didn't really seriously think that it would happen. And then it happened completely out of the blue. And the companies, of course, also claimed that it was completely impossible since they wouldn't find any employees without the subcontractors. And then subcontractors were forbidden in October 2020. And by January 2021, everybody was, had been hired by the, by the slaughterhouses directly. And uh, yeah, the world didn't end. Uh, they, they could still find workers and... and, and 
um, slaughterhouses didn't stop and we still have meat uh, in the supermarket in Germany. So it, uh, it was possible and it would have been possible before, but they just didn't, didn't want to do. And this, this very sudden intervention from, from the government um, pretty much rearranged also the, 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 the power, power relations within, within the companies because actually for some time there also had been a, a shortage of workers in the industry. I have mentioned that the fluctuation has been, has been very high because basically everybody who, who could searched for a job uh, uh, in another branch. And this, this, this shortage of workers had already in 2018, 2019 have led to, uh, to some increasing in salaries, especially for, for qualified workers. And um, when the slaughterhouses found themselves employing people directly, uh, there were many people who, who, who asked for, 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 for higher wages and better conditions. And in quite many cases, this, this also functioned to, to some extent. So we had in the spring of 2021, uh, several spontaneous strikes, which, which had also not, not been, never happened before basically, but, but suddenly we had people more or less spontaneously organizing themselves and, and going on, on spontaneous strikes, which well, in Germany is also not quite not quite legal because also strikes are, are very strictly regulated in Germany, but, but they did it anyway. And we also had quite a large number of people becoming union members and, and organizing uh, uh, within the unions, um, which previously, of course, previously we also had many people organizing, but it was mostly or to a very large extent, it was people who were basically already with one foot out of the factory, as you could say. So people who at least mentally already already resigned or, and didn't really want to, to really work there for a long time. So it was mostly people who have given up uh, at least, at least uh, so they, they thought about giving up. But in, in 2021, we, we suddenly had a lot of people really, really also becoming, becoming members in, in the union. And now they actually have also a few collective, collective labor agreements uh, 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 that, that are being negotiated. Of course, salaries are still quite low and, and the fluctuation is still, still quite high. But um, still this, this new situation and the new law that we had that we have in the meat industry had, had uh, given us at least the chance to, to better, to, 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 to really uh, on the long run change something with, uh, with the work conditions because uh, before it has always been an individual counseling and, and basically people who came to us were have after that also left left the branch, but but now there are even more people uh, showing interest in how to change their their uh, uh, working conditions uh, on on the long run. And this year we will we will be having um, elections for for shop stewards. So shop stewards are are workers who who can represent other workers uh, and and uh, should be protecting basically the rights of their colleagues, which in Germany is, is very, very important and it was not possible with the, with the subcontractors, but now it will, it will happen for, for those employed by the slaughterhouses and it will be very, very uh, exciting and interesting to see how, how that, will, that will play out. Um, I think I already kind of over spend my time. So maybe I would stop just, just there. And so we can still have some time for your questions and for discussion. Thank you.